Good day. Zombies. Bloody zombies. The ever-growing horde of the undead was played out over a decade ago. It has been a zombie concept that has long been rotting away in the popular consciousness. I get it. Lads and lasses, shooting the Zambetti and not being afraid to scavenge for 9mm for war is a cool concept, but how many times can the same story be retread over and over again? The zombie concept is the next-gen survival story. For me, they got played out in terms of literature with the release of World War Z, and in terms of games, nothing has yet to slay the undead game that is Left 4 Dead 2. Zombie stories are just boring. For every Fido in Night of the Living Dead 3, you have 8 million other derivative works that amount to the same bloody plot. Zombies rise, humanity falls, and the story looks at just how far humanity will go to survive. Thankfully today, we can look at something really unique, and something really bloody cool. The Third Wave, Idolin, is a cool title with a cool cover and a cool story that is fuck awesome in terms of sheer concept and execution. This was another novel that I discovered randomly on Amazon. It was written by John O'Brien and the novel was released way back in 2017. I picked it up this year due to the synopsis alone. So in a zombie book, you need two things, a collapse of society and zomzoms. You can usually have one lead to the other, but that's pretty boring and not to mention silly. Zombies Zombies are the easiest enemies to defeat, well, except for Oblivion Zombies, and those Draugr Death Lords that don't push you over either, but still, Zombombos are not going to cause society to come crashing down. So O'Brien gives us a one-two punch to kick off the story. So first, you gotta take down the power, man. And how do you take this down? Well, you use a massive solar flare, aka the first wave. This turns off the world, and while it's doing that, it hits CERN right in the middle of a particle experiment. Oh dear. The second wave is fucking awesome. Somehow, the science got borked and a second wave of soul-sucking quantum energy is shot out around the world. Most people get their souls sucked out either A, to the God Emperor, or B, sent to some sort of quantum heaven. The zombies in this novel have their quantum souls half in and half out of their bodies and are thus in extreme metaphysical pain, and instead of eating brains, they use the souls of non-soul ripped out humans to piggyback to quantum heaven. By doing this though, they turn the unfortunate normal human into another soul zombie. Now, the world is filled with soulless, brain-dead human living corpses, because apparently when you lose your soul, your brain goes with it, soul zombies, and a few thousand non-soul messed up humans. First, holy shit, is this a cool concept for a zombie novel. Second, holy shit, is this a fucking epic concept for a novel in general. A quantum experiment at CERN proves that quantum souls exist and some sort of quantum heaven exists. So I guess there must be some sort of quantum god in this universe? And this just raises more questions. Let's look at our protagonists. You have a submarine commander and a father-daughter hiking team. The father character is not Prepper Man, and all he rocks is a Beretta 92. And the sub-commander does not have a maxed out leadership stat either. The lion's share of the novel concerns our two protagonist teams. They were both deep beneath the surface of the earth when the second soul sucking wave hit. Turns out if you were deep enough underground you could survive the second wave. But now you have a world filled with quantum zombies. Our sub commander surfaces only to find friendly ships drifting and a whole bunch of people doing odd things. The novel really gets the horror of the soul zombie right and it's a scary bloody concept. A walking corpse is a threat but it's not that scary. But a person with a mirror image of themselves tethered to their body screaming is something else entirely. The sub commander's plot is as you would expect. He must secure resources to keep his people alive. The father and daughter team start up in a cave and have to figure out how to get the safety. They get some cool battles and the father character gets to shoot a couple Zed heads with his Beretta. In a bit of convenience though, they find a house with a shit ton of guns and a safe that just so happens to be open, but whatever, he needed to get an AR somehow. The survival bits of the book are entertaining and are interesting in the fact that most of the time the good guys win. The concept of the book is just so bloody cool. Soul 
Zombies. I don't know what kind of nightmare O'Brien had to have to come up with that one, but damn. The novel itself is a quick read and is thankfully standalone, meaning O'Brien does not belabor the point or stretch stuff out to fit 27 bloody books. And the novel actually has, oh my god, an ending? Whatever next? The survival stuff never bogs down in building shit for chapters, and the characters never go on massive monologues on how man brought this on himself and other such claptrap. The novel is also novel in that it makes all the fighting a good thing. With the soul zombies, when you kill one, all you're doing is setting its tortured soul free, so the battles are rather altruistic in many respects. The protagonists, while they're nothing special in terms of characterization, are at least nice and lack any truly negative attributes, while staying far away from Mary Sue territory. This novel, due to its quality, earns the Alpha Prime moniker, as it is a book with so many good elements that one will want to keep coming back year after year. And so, I'm Jitterlots, wishing you good World War Z and good Zombie Slayer, whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this great content. So about that ending, ladies and gentlemen. This novel is a one and done, and the novel well and truly ends. The submarine commander and crew find enough humans to set up a small town and begin rebuilding humanity. The father and daughter character find a secluded summer camp, and the father teaches the daughter how to survive, and they live ever after. The epilogue, though, is really bloody good. Decades after the end of the novel, the dad character died, and thus the daughter is living alone at the summer camp. Earlier in the novel, it is implied that the daughter has some sort of magical powers. The sub-commander's town is doing well enough, but has to endure soul zombie migrations. The daughter taps into her magical powers and sucks up all the soul zombie souls and then helps them pass into quantum heaven. And the novel ends with the sub-commander seeing a third wave, the wave of magic that is used to suck up all the soul zombies into heaven. The daughter dies from saving the souls and she gets to lay to rest on her father's grave. The end. Like the concept of the book, holy shit, we've got a happy ending in a post-apocalypse zombie book? Never let it be said, ladies and gentlemen, that creativity is dead. You just really have to know where to look.